A lot of watercolor painters ask me, how can I keep my colors clean? Well, I have a few little tips for you there. There are just a few things that you can do to always be sure that you have nice, clean, bright watercolor. Uh, when you're working. Now, two things. One, if you uh, have your colors, if you leave your colors on your palette, as I do, uh, then this you might be having trouble with. If you're putting your colors out fresh each time from the tube, then you can ignore this part. But if you're leaving your colors on the palette, the, those colors need to be softened each time before you begin working. I like to use a little squirt bottle like this and just give each color a little spray. Um, two or three squirts of spray like that and let it sit for a couple of minutes before you start working. There's the first thing. Now here's the other thing. When you're pulling, what, what, uh, pulling color from the palette, I've seen people uh, first of all dip their brushes in their water and then bring that loaded brush of water onto the palette. Well you're, that's going to feature right there. When you dip your brush into the water you give it a little shake or two, but just lean it, uh, let it lean on a piece of paper towel or a pad like that and have some of that water to uh, absorb away from the brush before you take it into the color. The next thing, don't just reach in and pull a little bit of color and then start working it on the palette. Chances are if you do that, your color is going to be too light and you're going to keep working it and then you're going to get it dull. The thing to do is to work the brush in the little pot in the pile of color or in the reservoir of color. Work the brush in that the damp brush for a little while until you get a nice rich color. And you can sometimes you need to add a little water to it. In that case, I will just dip the brush in the water and add a little onto the corner. But be sure that you really work it, activate it. That's the better term. Activate that color and have start out with a pile of nice dark color. No matter how light you want the color to be uh, in your painting, whatever you're doing, always start out with nice dark color. And you notice what I try, what I do here, my tendency is, I'll, first of all, I always use a flat brush to pull the color out, and uh, I pu push the brush forward like that to enable the, the paint to fall out of the brush. So the next thing, now, uh, I'm going to pull a second color out here to demonstrate this part. So I'll just pull out, um, this is, this is, this is be a really good color because these are almost complements of each other. Uh, so, now, when you pull out a second color, pull it out the same way uh, and pull it out beside your original color. If you want a mixture, it's not a good idea to take, uh, take a brush full of color this way and plop it right in the middle of that. To do that, you're not going to have any control of your color. So when you're mixing two or more colors, it's better to have those colors side by side on the palette. That's a good practice for mixing color, no matter what medium you're working in. So uh, then before mixing those colors, rinse the brush off um, and, and dry the brush, not dry the brush, but at least get the excess water off. Okay, here's the next thing. Now, each one of these things I've uh, gone with you, over, gone over with you, um, are things that can cause color to go muddy, or to go dirty, or to go dull. Watercolor that is. So if if it's not strong enough when it comes out of the little reservoir here, once you activate it, it's not strong enough. You can you can go muddy. Uh, if you have too much water on the brush when you pull it into your uh, into your paint there it can go muddy. Uh, if you don't soften your little paint wells before you start, it's go it can go muddy. See, a number of things can cause watercolor to go muddy. It's a fickle medium, but we can, we can uh, learn to control these things just by following these little steps. Now here's the other thing, and I see this so often it makes me cringe, especially when I see it on YouTube. I see people reach their paint in this, so they're going to mix a color. So here's what they'll do. They'll just go, ah, oh, mix, 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 mix. That is the worst thing you can do to get vibrant color. And a lot of people uh, say that they like mud. Well, if they like mud, you'll get good mud if you'll do that. But there's also a danger, and that is the more you stir that color, 
the more you um, you flatten out the particles of paint. So if you want uh, the best way to a better way, I'm not going to say the best way because somebody else may have even a better way than mine, but a better way to do that for mixing a color, pull a little bit, depending on the value of the color you want, but pull a little bit of the color out, uh, one, one color out just from your little pile there, then pull a little bit of the next color out. And this way you can keep pulling of the next color into the pile just like this. You don't pull, pull, stir, stir, pull, pull, stir, stir. That's not necessary. You can keep pulling that uh, second color into the pile until you get what you want. Now you'll notice here it feels slightly unmixed. Being slightly unmixed is a really, really good thing because that's going to give you nice, brilliant color when you go to the paper. Now if I just go to the paper right here and you can see, you can see that is gray color. But you can see, as it begins to settle in, you'll begin to see a little bit of the red and a little bit of the blue, and that'll even out into this nice, crisp, luminescent uh, gray. But if I stir, 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 like I see so many people now only do that, they'll then they'll, they'll reach their brush and they stir, 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 stir. When I see that, then here's what you're going to get. You're going to get mud. It's going to be just a dull gray color. So you can see the difference between the luminosity of this swatch and just the dull grayness of that swatch. All right, one other thing, and that is what happens on the paper. Now, uh, I see this a lot of times when people are doing washes on the paper, and I'll just do a, a quick wash in and uh, show you. First of all, I'll start out, this is going to be, a, I'll do a little wet and wet wash, and I'll start out just by wetting the paper for a wet and wet wash. Now, first I'm going to show you what I see people doing. It makes me cringe. <laughs> I see people doing this. I'm just going to mix the color. It doesn't matter how I mix it. I see people going, over, 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 over. And I see this on people teaching YouTube. I can't believe they're doing it, and they're just doing it over and over. The more you do that, the more you, uh, the duller you make the paint. Just paint this over and 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 over. It's not necessary. So the, the better way to go about that, if you're doing a wet and wet wash, the better way to go about that is to control it. So if I'm doing a wet and wet wash, let's see down in here, like this, you'll see that all of that is simply not necessary. Let me get a little bit more bright paint, put it right over here, pull this into it like I instructed you to do, like this. Now, all you need to do is give a stroke and overlap that stroke, come back and give another stroke and overlap that stroke. You can go one or two times and you will have a nice smooth wash. You might, you might even be able to go vertically. But the thing is, if you keep stroking over and over and over and over again, the whole thing is going to dry flat and dull. The, uh, and while I'm doing that, I might say, I have seen people do this, when it begins to dry here, then they'll go back with their other color, and when they'll do, you see what happens here. It just pulls the other color away. Now that is a technique that you can use if you want to lift out color. Uh, but this is not about lifting out color. This is about keeping uh, keeping color nice and bright. So um, you can also you can put another layer of color. And just let it uh, let it dry and and, and uh, uh, even out on its own, and it's a much more crisp, clean color uh, than if you just swatch the devil out of it. So, if you found this quick tip helpful, why not explore our full-length instructional videos at dyingminds.com? We have numerous downloads and DVDs. In fact, over a hundred. So give it a try. And there's your quick tip.